Good evening for those who are starting to log in. Uh, we are about to begin our webinar for the evening. While people are arriving, we'll launch a poll. And please take a your time and share any of your views on how many open houses does your ship conduct? What social media marketing do you do? And while we're letting everyone arrive for the webinar and start our Facebook live stream, please take your time and uh, include this information on our poll. We appreciate everyone joining us tonight. Sea Scout marketing is one of the most important topics that we have. And we are very fortunate to have Michael Ramsey, who's the Director of Marketing for the Boy Scouts of America, to be with us this evening to help understand geofencing and how we can use it to uh, increase our membership. All right, we're starting to see poll answers coming in. We have about 23 participants so far, and we will continue to let people uh, answer these polls uh, while others are signing in because it's just at six o'clock in California, uh, nine o'clock on the East Coast, and people could be getting home from work, having dinner, or uh, turning off their favorite TV program to, to see our webinar tonight on geofencing. So while that is still uploading and connecting, uh, Michael, can you tell our attendees a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. Oh, my name's Michael Ramsey. I'm Director of Marketing and Brand at the National Service Center. And um, yeah, proud, uh, proud scouts. I've uh, been with the Boy Scouts for oh, a long time. And um, yeah, I've got uh, two scout sons, one Eagle Scout son who's as a district executive at Longhorn Council about a year and a half ago and seems to love his job very much. So, uh, so as we get started, I'll tell you a funny anecdote about Colin. Uh, he had been on the job for about a month. He was working his district um, and he called me one night because um, he had been visiting all the units in his district. And he said, hey, have you heard of sea scouting? And I said, well, 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 yes, it's one of our marquee programs. And he said, I just went to the neatest meeting. He had gone to a Sea Scout ship meeting in Arlington, Texas, which I guess you'd probably call a, a landlocked uh, a landlocked ship. But he said, they have an amazing program. And I don't think they were very big, but he was just blown away by the program, by the leaders, by the kids that were involved in the program, just uh, got really excited about it. But um, it was it was great to hear about our program through the lens of somebody who really was unaware of it, had gone to a meeting, was just totally blown away by what he found. So it's really, really great. So glad to be here tonight. Looking forward to this conversation. I'm glad that is a DE. Yeah, so, me too. <laughs> so, <laughs> so with 29 people who have uh, joined us so far, I'm going to close the poll. And let's take a look at the results just to see how people have used uh, different recruiting strategies. So uh, about 40% of our responders uh, have done a open house at least once a year, 10% uh, twice a year, more than twice a year, we're at 25%, so that's awesome. Never 25%, and we're gonna talk about that towards the end because we'd like to see that change. Uh, social media that people use to market their ship, 95% uh, said Facebook fan pages. That's fantastic. And this Excellent. is the one for you. Uh, Instagram, 25% uh, of our uh, uh, viewers. Awesome. Nextdoor, 5%. We could do a webinar on how to use Nextdoor because it could be very effective in a lot of places. Sure. Snapchat at zero. And I'm not surprised by that because it's hard to use for marketing for us, so not not entirely surprised by that, but uh, we can look at it. Uh, Twitter at 5%. Um, Good. Excellent, excellent. No one's using TikTok yet, and that's okay. Um, we've had, oh, 17 people don't know if, or excuse me, have not used uh, geofencing for targeted campaign, mm -hmm. uh, and three, uh, or 15% don't know. And that's um, very telling and understand why we're doing this because this can really help you market your Sea Scout ship, get your message out in your community. Uh, 
and grow because there's no shortage of teenagers in the United States and there's plenty for all of us to get all these youth on the water who want to get out there and have fun and make new friends. And so with that as the background, Michael, take it away. All right. Well, listen, well, thank you very much, Josh. I, really, I appreciate the invitation to be here because this is exciting. We've um, let me give you a little context here. We started doing some research um, using geofencing on Facebook oh, a little over a year ago. Um, we had to begin to understand, well, here's the conversation, right? So if you're a parent today or a kid, um, how do you find things? How do we market things to traditionally? Well, traditionally, um, in a Cub Scouting program, for instance, where we kind of first started pioneering these things, um, it's posters, flyers, yard signs, stickers. It's kind of the traditional old school way we reach out to people. But think for a second, where do you find information about things that are going on in your community? Well, if you're like most people out there, you're probably using this, right? You're, you're Googling it, you're finding out things on Facebook, and that's what exactly what the research says. The research says that over three quarters of Americans are on Facebook, right? And of that number, most check their Facebook page, I think it's over two thirds check it at least once a day, and it's, uh, we have a lot of research that says that parents in particular are checking it six and a half times per day. That's for moms of, of younger age kids. So. Oh, this is just ubiquitous, right? And we've got to figure out a better way to get in front of parents with our messages, right? So, so, so fast forward to, and I'm going to talk about Cub Scout recruiting just a little bit. This is not a Cub Scouting conversation, but I've got a good case study, right? We reached out last year uh, to about 20 councils across the country, and we said, hey, look, if you'll give us date, location, time, information about your joint scouting nights for Cub Scouting, again, this is a different audience, but it's a good example, um, We'll geofence them for you, and we're going to talk about exactly how to do that. But we got uh, over 3,100, I actually got 3,119 Cub Scout packs that we used this technology on last year through Facebook. What was really interesting is that we saw a over 7% increase in the number of new Cub Scouts in those Cub Scout packs compared to uh, units in those same councils that we didn't use geofencing for. So an average of 7.43% increase. Pretty amazing. Um, those that weren't geofenced within the same council, we saw a loss of negative 9% of new Cub Scouts. So some pretty telling information. So we've been working to try to socialize this tactic. Um, we don't think it's a replacement for um, other traditional types of whether you're doing flyers or posters or those kinds of conversations, but this is not a silver bullet, but one more tactic that you can use to reach parents exactly where you find them. So uh, what I'd like to do tonight is kind of walk you through um, how what geofencing is, how it works, how to set up um, an event and geofence it, and then I want to talk about search a little bit at the end because I think that's uh, an important part of our conversation today. So Josh, does that make sense? Absolutely. Very good. So, so let me tee it up like this if I can get my slides to advance here. There we go. Okay. So let, let's talk about what geofencing is. And really geofencing is a misnomer because really what we're gonna talk about is events within Facebook. So let's start by saying, um, I'm gonna assume, if not, I'll show you, not every Facebook page is exactly alike. So we have our, our personal Facebook pages like this one, right? So you post your, you know, what you had for breakfast and funny memes that you've seen and Russian car crash videos and all the other crazy stuff that kind of flows through your, your Facebook page, right? Well, so that's an individual Facebook page. This is a snapshot of mine. You can kind of see all the crazy stuff goes on on my page. But organizations, for instance, your council, businesses, have what's called an organization page. And this is a completely fake page that I created so I could uh, show you exactly how the thing works. But um, this is a Facebook page that is out of a mythical city called Portland, Oregon. Um, I built this from scratch, um, imported some pictures off the BSA Brand Center, populated it with some things. Um, one of the things you'll notice about a page like this is that it has a different suite of tools. So if you look down the left-hand side there, if you've never paid attention, you'll see um, a menu that says things like home, events, posts, reviews, videos, photos, about I mean, there's all kinds of things that are there. Um, at the top kind of cut off there, you can see there's a button called Contact Us. These are great pages. If your ship doesn't have one, you should definitely, uh, as soon as this is over, go set one up. Um, that Contact Us button is just terrific. It's a great way for people to reach out and, and find you and, and join your ship, hopefully. So 
Um, what you see in the center there is in my mythical Facebook page, Facebook page I've set up a mythical event. Um, it's an open house um, based, and again, in, in Portland, Oregon. Find out more about Sea Scouting Fun, Friends Adventure, Free Pizza, come join the fun, right? So it's set up for May 10th at 4.50 p.m. Um, it was super easy to set up. I tell people if you can upload a photo to your Facebook page, you can certainly set up an event. But let me walk you through exactly how it works. So um, here's a picture of the event calendar. And th these, these pages are just so amazing because now you may have had a, a website once upon a time where you had an event calendar, all these things going on. The beautiful thing about this is it's all consolidated into one easy location. You can customize the pictures and all that kind of stuff. So um, if you see where it says upcoming events down there, on the right hand side, you see a button that says boost event. That's where this journey starts. So once you've created your organization Facebook page, and populate it with all the cool stuff that your, that your ship does, uh, you start to populate with events. And so maybe it's an open house, maybe it's the next meeting. In this particular case, I have an open house that I want to, that I want to uh, promote. So create an event, it's easy. You click the create an event button. Um, it will come up and this is so easy if you've not done it. Facebook is automatically begins to populate things into your event. Um, that you can then customize. For example, it's going to grab the photo off of your landing page and drop it in as the image on your event. Super cool, very easy. Um, as you can see there, there's a place called uh, event name, so you populate that, that um, location. Um, it could be the location where your ship is located, or you may be having an event down the street someplace, but uh, drop that address in. It'll pull up a map and help you walk through her, that, where that goes. And then a description, of course, of your event. Again, find out more, see scouting, fun, friends, free pizza. Um, it will also allow you to customize that image that's in the top. You can use um, any images that you may have uploaded to your phone or to your laptop computer or your device. Um, it will also um, offer you a set of image assets, which is basically just stock imagery. So if you don't have a really good picture of your ship, uh, you probably should go make some. But if that's not possible, you should go out and grab one of these really nice images. I just searched for boats. Um, beautiful selection of, of images that you can import. Um, on that same page, it will let you uh, put in obviously the date and time and those kinds of things onto your event. Super easy to do. This is a cool feature, right? So, so think about your own personal Facebook page for a minute. Um, if I um, post something on my page, my friends are gonna see that post. Well, the cool thing about an event page is that I can add co-hosts to my event. So if it's me by myself, my group of five friends are going to see my event. Um, but if I co-host the event with Josh, and Josh has got a thousand friends, then they'll see my friends and his thousand friends, and we'll have a much bigger event, right? So um, in the case of, uh, it might be if you have a relationship with a religious organization or maybe other organizations in the community, um, if you want to co-host it with three friends or other skippers, those kinds of things, you can add them to that uh, co-host list because you can add multiple people to it and it will expand the reach of who's going to be seen, who's going to see your, uh, your invitation. So that's pretty cool. Um, and this is what the image looks like. Uh, it will show you, if you look there in the center, uh, you see a couple of menus, desktop newsfeed, mobile newsfeed, uh, mobile marketplace. It shows you what your ad is going to look like in each one of those different types of environments and continues to give an opportunity to, to um, customize those things if you want to. Okay, so once the event's set, pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Um, there's that little button down at the bottom that says boost. This is where it gets fun. So again, Facebook, very easy to use, pops up this cool window that says, hey, now that you've done your, your setup on your event, you should consider boosting it. So you hit the boost event button. And it starts walking through a pro walking you through a process that starts with targeting your audience. Again, this is super simple. I just took screen captures, by the way, as I was actually I built my Facebook page, um, and then you actually began to set up real real events. And these are screen captures as I walk through the process. So, next step is create an audience. So, you've created an event. Now your challenge is you want to reach a specific audience and invite them to come to your open house on your ship, right? So for, and I've got a couple of examples here. So this one, I put down teens, sea scouting, and it asks you a series of questions. Well, uh, first one is gender. Do you want to reach men or women or both? Well, obviously we want to invite both. So you click all. What's the age range? Well, it may vary depending on what you're trying to market, but uh, you can put in 
13 to 18, just for fun, just for a demonstration model here. And then ask you for location. This is the geofencing part of the conversation, right? So I want to reach um, men and women ages 13 to 18 within a specific geographic area. And this is where it gets cool. So I put in, again, Portland, Oregon. It automatically puts in a radius. So what does that mean, right? So here's an example of what that looks like. Um, so for example, little red dot is the location where my, where my ship is actually located, just for example. Um, but I'm going to do an open house at the location where the blue check mark is, which is just happens to be the center of Portland, Oregon. And it puts up a 10 mile radius around the outside of it, right? Um, you can dial that radius in and out um, as small as to a mile and as large as, as big as you want to go. And by the way, you can customize this by zip codes too. So if I wanted to go in and target a specific zip, I could put that in and it will target within that specific radius too. Super easy, super cool. Um, so for example, here's, here's another example of a different location. Here's the cool thing, um, you can add multiple locations. So for example, if my ship is located uh, at the harbor, where am I, where we normally meet at the marina, but I'm targeting say three high schools in my community or those types of locations, I can go in and drop different geo targets around the specific address of those high schools, for example, um, and set the radius. Um, obviously, if you had three 10 mile radiuses stacked on top of each other, that's not helpful. You can dial those down really tight. So how does that work, right? So um, if we were in the room together, I would say who has the Starbucks app on their phone, right? Or who has the Target app on your phone? And so when you get close to a Starbucks, if you have the Starbucks app, Starbucks app the, you get a notification on your screen that says Starbucks is two miles away and caramel macchiatos are on sale. It has a message, right, related to your how close you are to a bricks and mortar location. Well, the experience someone has with Facebook is if I get, if I break the geofence, if I get within three miles of Lincoln High School, I'll get a notification in my Facebook feed that says, hey, it's a Sea Scout open house is next Thursday night at a particular time and location and gives you that information. I mean, you've probably seen these if you've been on Facebook. Uh, it's concerts, it's different events in your community and you can click whether you're interested or not, and Facebook will continue to remind you about those events. Super cool. Um, this is neat. I love the fact that you can do multiple locations for geofencing because um, it's one thing if you're marketing to a group of people at one specific school, for instance, or a specific location, but probably in the case of a Sea Scout ship, you may, you may be pulling from multiple locations or multiple high schools. Uh, for example, Again, mythical city of Portland. Here's a map of all of the high schools within the Portland geographic area. Man, there's a bunch of them. Uh, in theory, you could choose a radius and drop uh, geo pins on top of multiple locations, invite kids from Madison and Grant and Franklin all to come to an open house event um, at a specific location if you wanted to, right? Well, what's the old saw? Why did, uh, why did Dillinger rob banks? Because that's where the money was. Well, where do you find kids? Well. Josh and I were having this conversation earlier this week. Uh, where do you find parents? Where do you find teenagers these days? Well, think about your neighborhood, think about your community. I know here, um, you probably wanna stay away from Starbucks at about four o'clock in the afternoon, if it's near a high school, because it's covered up with our target audience, quite frankly. So um, in this example, there's no reason in the world why you couldn't go out and drop a geo pin related to your event on top of any one of your friendly neighborhood Starbucks locations, right? Um, and you could, be very, very specific on who you want to target at those specific locations. So the experience is, if I'm part of the audience that I'm targeting and I go within a mile of a Starbucks location, I'll get a notification on my phone that says, hey, Sea Scout Ship X is having open house on such and such a night. So it's pretty cool, it's very slick. The neat thing about the tools located within, this, within, within Facebook is that you can get very, very specific. So here's an example. Um, Certainly, we might want to target teens as a target audience to join our Sea Scout ship. You might want to target parents too, right? Sometimes parents and many times parents are big influencers in a decision on what organizations to get involved in. Um, so you may want to do multiple targets, multiple pins. But um, if you go into the targeting tools within this same page, Facebook will say, hey, are there other people that you want to reach or give us some more information about who you want to target? So in this particular example, I typed in the word parents. Well, guess what? You go in and ask for parents in Facebook. Facebook comes back and says, great, we can help you with that. There are like 15 different categories of parents that you might want to target. So if you look at this list, um, it will say 
hmm, do you want to target parents with kids, children ages zero to 12 months? No, no, I don't think so. Uh, all parents? Mm, probably not. That's probably too many. Parents with adult children ages 18 to 26? No, we don't want those either. Uh, parents with early school kids? No. Parents with preschoolers? No. Parents with preteens age 12? No. Parents with teenagers ages 13 to 18? Yes, I'll take one of those. So you check that box. Um, and you can add as many of these as you want um, and get very, very specific. Here's a warning though. Um, you could get so specific that you rule out everybody in your target audience, right? So uh, a broader net may make more sense depending on what kind of situation you're, you're going after. Um, uh, you can kind of play with it and see depending on who you're trying to reach and where you're targeting. So let's talk about money for a second because the reason Facebook does this is they're trying to make some money. Now you can set up an event and, and not, not boost it, right? Which means that um, if Josh and I are co-hosting it, then our friends will see it, probably not all of our friends based on the Facebook algorithm, but a fair number will probably see it. What we want to do is reach beyond our circle of friends. We, we want to let everybody know about Sea Scouting and invite them to come join our ship and have a great adventure uh, in scouting. So here's how it works. The cool thing is, and this is all, by the way, this is on the same page as you scroll down, um, you can set the duration of your Facebook event um, as far out as you want. Um, the research we've done, we've done as far as 30 days out, right? We don't recommend that. I don't think most people plan their live 30 days out. Um, typically, we're recommending anywhere from a week to maybe two weeks. Um, and then you can set the dollar amount. Now, here's a warning. Um, Facebook will take every nickel you'll give them if you'll let them, but you shouldn't do that, right? So what, in this particular model that we've, that we've set up, we've said we want to run the ad for, or the event, we're promote it, for, for seven days. And we've said, okay, well, what if we spent a whopping $2 a day, which is probably what I would have spent on two caramel macchiatos at Starbucks anyway. So there's $14. If you look down at the bottom of the screen, it says the number of people who may see your ad. Facebook estimates based on the number of people that, are, that fit our profile within this geographic area, it estimates that by promoting this ad at $14 over seven days or $2 a day, you're gonna reach anywhere between 140 and 420 people per day out of a total of about 9,800 total. Which for two bucks is pretty good, right? I don't know many other ways that you can reach that many people in a very targeted fashion uh, to invite them to an event like this, right? So um, pretty interesting. Um, if you keep going, you could add more money to it if you want. Uh, if you wanted to spend $30 over the course of seven days, it does the math and comes back and says, hey, we think you're going to reach anywhere between 295 to 730 people, per, or so what, 737 people per day, still pretty good. And if you wanted to get totally crazy, you could spend $2,000 and you'll reach between 12 and over 4,000 people per day with the promotion of your Sea Scout event, right? So pretty very easy. Um, I'll, I'll be honest, the, the work we've done on using this tool to market to, to other parents, we're recommending about anywhere from seven to 14 days out. We're not recommending more than about a dollar a day for that. Now that's a very specific ask and it's a different program. I think uh, based, and that's on a program, Cub Scouting, for instance, it probably has a higher awareness level um, and maybe a little bit more of a built-in audience because we're targeting parents and kids at elementary schools, right? Um, I think we, in this example, Josh, we should probably explore maybe maybe a little bit more than that. But even still, at a starting price of fourteen dollars, it's pretty affordable. Um, when, uh, you know, I'll add that when we've started Sea Scout ships in places that don't have any Sea Scout ships, and we've done a campaign to uh, for volunteers, and then done a follow-up campaign to promote the open house right. and with parents, uh, those campaigns are anywhere at least 20 uh, as high as $40 just because we're doing it. We don't want to waste the opportunity. Uh, if we spend $40 and get 10 kids, cool. Like, That's awesome. <laughs> it's like mission <laughs> accomplished. We have enough youth to charter that ship, like game on, you know, like we won. Um, I haven't done more than that. Uh, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't definitely wouldn't go above 50, but you know, 40, you know, it, it's when you think of cost of flyers, yeah, go for oh, it. Yeah. 
and, and look at the frequency. You, know, like you only get back to school recruiting once a year. So if you're going to take your shot, take the shot. And you, know, you can test different campaigns and see what works the best uh, for you. So a bunch of options, but I, I wouldn't you know, you know, just put down $10 and call it, you know, let's see what happens. I, I, would, I would up the ante. I totally agree. You know, and in a situation like, again, in, in the mythical example here where you might have a ship and multiple high schools within a fairly tight geographic area, you could do what we would call in the ad game, you know, a little bit of A-B targeting, right? I might try a specific message and a different spin at high school A. High school B, I might try spending a little bit more and maybe try a little bit different message, right? So for example, we, we've tested this online with uh, messages that say, hey, Scotty's great, join now. We've also tested messages that are, hey, scouting's great, click here to find out more. What's interesting is find out more did a lot better than join now. We think join, join now is too much too soon, right? That's, that's just too aggressive. But join now or uh, but find out more, well, that's a little softer. I want to find out about this before I ultimately decide to make a decision. So uh, there might be some testing you want to do with messages to see. And it's, again, it's fairly affordable and you can target multiple locations and kind of play and see what works best for, for your ship. Uh, we just had a question come in that asked any YPT issues with targeting youth with social media. No, it's marketing. You know, we're targeting demographics and that's how you get the message out. So, you know, there, there's no YPT issue with doing targeted marketing campaigns. Uh, now here's one. Are there any results from using geofencing in a rural area? Area, Because this individual's a DE in a rural area. I haven't seen that on the Sea Scout side yet. I mean, the best we did was, was Tahoe. Uh, Michael, have you guys seen anything with the Cub Scout experience? Yes, uh, well, I, I'll, I'll answer the first question also. Um, so Facebook won't let you target youth younger than 13. So as you, as you start playing with all the, the targeting features within Facebook, um, you just can't do it. So it won't let you use those tools to target youth below a certain age. So, so that's great. Uh, and a quick note about a, sometimes we get questions about hey, I've got a, uh, should I have a closed page or should I have a public page or should I have a private page? Um, those youth protection issues apply online as well. And we, and we have a lot of other resources. For instance, you know, you, you shouldn't friend a kid uh, or a youth member um, online by yourself, right? I mean, those, those conversations should happen in an open forum and in terms of sharing images of kids. Um, that's another conversation, it's good. I, I, I recommend that you have a conversation with the youth in your ship and say, hey, we're gonna take pictures of the event this Saturday. Um, and is everybody okay with that? Are you okay with having your image on the page? And we don't share personally identifiable information. It's social media, so that's a challenge. But we wanna make sure that there's no reason that um, anybody in the ship might want to not have their image shared. It happens, it happened in my, my troops, happened in other organizations I've worked for. Just be very, very careful on that. So to the question about recruiting in a rural area, I'll tell you what we've learned on the Cub Scouting side of the equation, where, again, we've done a lot of that and are about to do a lot more. Um, we've had councils tell us that it actually works better in rural areas than it does in some urban areas. I think because not as much competition. Um, they may be more familiar with, with, for instance, a school and organization in the community, but the challenge of just getting the word out about, hey, it's time to join or there's an opportunity to do X or Y um, is higher. So uh, we've heard that story several times from councils that say, this works great in rural areas because it's just one more connection point in a place where it's hard to, it's hard to stay connected. Um, as an aside, um, I have been doing more and more conversations like this with councils. I did one on Monday real time with a scout executive who called and said, wait, I just realized I could use this to market my golf tournament as a, on the development side of the equation. He said, yeah, for sure. Um, he said, I'm having a hard time getting people to respond. I said, well, so we picked several corporate headquarters in his community. We geofenced those with a very low level buy and uh, were able to reach a lot more people. So we're excited about that. Kind of thing. So good, good questions. Uh, the the uh, questioner clarified that uh -huh. I'm concerned with uh, if an inquiry comes in via direct message or such. Okay, that is more complicated because I would add a second adult to that chat and respond. Absolutely. Uh, you can also turn off that feature so they can't send chat uh, messages. They would have to make a public comment. 
Uh, if they send in an email, obviously just add another adult uh, in that situation to cover any YPT issues because then it's there are two adults on, on the message. Uh, but yes, that is a um, very good question for what happens when you know somebody messages a page and it's, you know, now on the flip side, there are multiple moderators. Yes, right. So you have multiple adults who can all see it at the same time. Uh, there's 2D leadership right there. Or right. I, I think multiple moderators is a great solution. And, and I've not, now that you've asked the question, I'm going to go back and look at the back end of Facebook and see. So when someone does message the page, can it go to multiple people? Um, probably so. Um, you can probably set it up to message your group. Um, I know with some of the autorespond features on Connect that, um, which is, by the way, the greatest feature in the world, it probably pings several different people who are classified as administrators on the page. But um, I'm going to check that out. It's a great question. Excellent. Let's, let's talk about Google. Let's talk about Google for a second. So um, I, this is something else that I don't know. I had a, an aha moment about two years ago, which actually was part of the cascade of this whole conversation. Um, I was at a digital conference and I heard the statistic that the most common search term on, on social right now, Google specifically, is find blank near me, right? And it's mostly, again, because of, because of your mobile device, right? Um, you're driving down the road, I'm looking for, I don't know, barbershop, barbecue, uh, you know, whatever it is, right? Find whatever it is near me. It is the number one search term out there with this included in it. So um, I live in, I actually live between Dallas and Fort Worth, not too far from DFW Airport. Um, I live in Longhorn Council, or I'm a recovering Cubmaster, and um, <laughs> the national headquarters is over in, the, in Las Colinas, which is on the Circle 10 side of the council. So I was sitting at my dining room table, it's a true story, and I said, huh, so I pulled up my trusty mobile device and I said, find Cub Scouting near me. Okay, here's what pops up. True story, I took the screen captures. This is uh, what popped up. So you can see the Dallas Scout Shop pops up, a couple of things. Um, but the first one on the list was Cub Scout Pack 321. And this is big North Richland Hills, Texas, which is yet another suburb in, of Fort Worth. Um, so look at this. They've got a very nice image. They've got some stars, um, a fairly decent photo. The hours are there. Phone number is there. Those kinds of things. If you click through, they don't have a ton of reviews, but they've got a few, um, and they're all very positive. Um, if you look down at the bottom right-hand corner of this page, they've got a website set up. Um, they've got a link to their Facebook page. It's, it's pretty cool. Well, and by the way, this is a true story, and I, live not, I know where all these units are because I live not far from here. You click down, um, and then you have this one. Okay, well, so there's no phone number. There's no hours. There's no contact information. Um, okay, I covered up the pack information because I was embarrassed for them. I didn't want to incriminate the, the, the innocent here. But if you look at that picture, I'm pretty sure that's a prison. I mean, you take a look. I see a chain link fence, and it's everything but the dog. Um, so uh, not a very appealing Google experience, right? So let's just say I'm um, a parent looking for a place to sign up a kiddo, and I do, I, I've never heard of beascout.org. I don't know what sea scouting is, maybe, right? Um, and I pull up my phone and say, hey, find scouting near me on Google, which is, I think, what most humans would do. Um, are you gonna join this pack? Pretty impressive. Or are you gonna join this pack, which is, maybe a little scary, right? Just because there's no information there. So my recommendation is you should totally Google yourself, right? And it sounds wrong when I say it like that, but you should totally go back near where you live and either use your mobile device or use someone who's not involved with scouting because that will mess with your search results. But search for find sea scouting near me or find, you know, find scout, whatever you want to search locally, right? Um, here's why this part of this, why this is important. Google owns 93% of the search market on mobile. It is just phenomenal. They are a category killer. Yes, there's other search engines, but Google is, is, is the hot one. Look, so um, I'll see what I did just for fun. I said, find Sea Scout ships on Google. This is the whole country, by the way. Um, I think I counted 11. 
um, coast to coast that have Google pins out there somewhere. Uh, good news, there's several of them, a lot of them on the East Coast. Um, there's one looks like a Michigan area somewhere. Um, so here's the point of all this is I think um, in addition to using Facebook to market yourself and, be, and to, to reach specific audiences in your area, you should also um, set up a Google pin for yourself claim your Sea Scout ship on Google so you can be found because at some point somebody's going to uh, see some of these great materials that are out there or they're going to hear broadcasts like this or somebody in the hallway is going to say, hey, Sea Scouting is really cool and they're going to pull out their phone and they're going to say, hey, find Sea Scouting near me and we don't want them to find nothing. We want them to find you where, where you live and it's easy to do. In fact, Josh, what I'll do, I have an instruction sheet that um, tells you exactly how to set up your, your Facebook pins, your, I'm sorry, your Facebook event and geofencing. And then also the other side of it tells exactly how you can go in and set up your, your Google pins on Google as well. So you can be literally put yourself on the map um, with Google. Um, and these aren't Michael Ramsey's instructions. These come straight from Google and from Facebook um, who do a much better job of explaining this than, than I ever will. But um, it's really, really a powerful tool. I highly recommend it um, if you really want to get out there and market yourself. Uh, on one level, I'm happy that eight out of the, the 11 ships are on the Western region. So that, Yeah, right? <laughs> uh, but we really, really need to up that number to help all the ships in the country. So uh, that how-to material, we can include that in the follow-up email. And that I know that will help a lot of folks uh, in getting this information out. And we'll ask the regional commodores to include it as well, because uh, every skipper should know how to do this. Fantastic. So with that, uh, so here, here's a question that I, I know you can at least ping to your team if you don't know oh. the answer. Okay. Any chance be a scout and Google could be synced? That's a great question. You know, we've had that conversation quite a bit um, and I'm going to have to find out the answer to that. We've, um, it makes a lot of sense. I'd like to see them synced up. Um, actually, B Scout uses the Google API behind the scenes. Um, I know early, early on, one of the reasons that we didn't have more information on some of those Google pins. So the question, well, let me back up a little bit. One of the questions was, why don't you just scrape the list of all the units that you've got in the country and dump them into Google pins in Google, so uh, so we could see all of the units that are in the United States for X cruise ships, the whole shoot and match, see them on the map. Well, uh, we're into some privacy issues, right? So if somebody clicked on a pen, who are they going to contact, right? Would it be Michael Ramsey? Well, Michael was associated with that ship, but he was only a volunteer for a year and left. And now you have a pen there with information that's not updated. Anyway, so there's a lot of issues associated with privacy. Um, did we want to take Michael Ramsey's phone number and dump it out onto Google without him knowing about it, without his permission? There's all kinds of things. So, um, I think we've progressed a long time, a long way since we since we did that. But uh, I'll find the answer and I'll get it back to you, Josh, and you can share it with share it with the groups. I think it's a good suggestion. I appreciate that. Uh, and I wouldn't, on the note of beascout.org, I encourage everyone if you haven't updated your ship pin, please do so because that's a one way that people find Sea Scout ships near them. And the default is for that to be turned off because of the privacy laws that we have. So be sure that that's activated and updated uh, with, with all of that information. Absolutely. Um, because uh, a, a lot of the defaults that we could have would be based upon the charter partners. And True. sometimes Sea Scout ships will have a charter partner, but the skipper lives far away and might still be in the, that service area, but all the youth are coming from schools that aren't near where the charter partner actually is. Well, that should change just from a, a operational perspective, uh, like that would skew results for, for doing these. So think in those terms that if you want your pin to be your base of operations opposed to your charter partner, you know, get active and, and put that in so that way uh, people searching for you can get uh, accurate results. Hey, let me add something else too. You mentioned Nextdoor earlier, which I think is a um, probably the next opportunity for us, or one another opportunity for us in terms of marketing. 
Um, we're looking at it from a, obviously from a, a financial level, from a paid perspective. How do we get enterprise level awareness through something like Nextdoor, which is great because it's neighborhood based, it's hyper local. You know, we, we talked about this for years that scouting is a little bit of a street corner business, right? It's, you know, you, you join a ship, um, you, yes, you're joining the Boy Scouts of America, but you're really joining, you know, Sea Scout ship 1851, whatever that is, right? Um, the cool thing about next door, and I have a great example here in my in my neighborhood in big, beautiful Bedford, Texas, is that there's a venturing crew in our community, and they have set up a set up their organization on next door. So anytime they're doing a fundraising event or a recruitment drive, I get a notification in next door that says venturing crew, whatever the number is, is having an open house event, right? And it doesn't cost them anything because they're set up as an organization on next door. And it's probably just managed by the, the, the crew advisor, right? But there's no cost associated with it. It's super cool. It's free. It's hyper local. Um, enterprise level advertising nationwide. I think if you want to go with something larger, um, and by the way, they, they if you've played on next door too much uh, or much at all, they're mostly home related things. So you'll see plumbing companies and realtors and those kinds of things. But that's about a $15,000 um, entry fee if you want to do enterprise level stuff. And we're not going to do that. Um, it's much, much more efficient, much more affordable, um, and probably more effective if it's your local Sea Scout ship that's set up on next door in whatever community that you happen to live in. Yeah, and also engaging your parents. And we, we can do a webinar specifically on next door. Uh, because there's a lot of social media apps that we can take deep dives in on how to use. Yeah. Uh, Central Region Commodore, uh, Kurt Ware just asked an awesome question highlighting our in, what our incoming national bosun's doing. And it, it goes to the uh, Gmail accounts and, and pins. Uh, you know, our incoming national bosun, Hannah, uh, is encouraging ships to come up with a, a kind of a standard Gmail account for all bosun. So mm -hmm. I, I grew up on Sea Scout ship Griffin. So it could be, you know, bosun Sea Scout, you know, or bosun Griffin 33, or ship 33 at gmail.com, for example. Add the ship profile to that. You know, there, there are ways that, that that could be done where the ship's base of operations is connected, not in individual's homes. You don't want to do, you know, t tell people where our scouts live. You want right. to on on where your activities take place. So always be mindful of, of YBT and the Guide to Safe Scouting with any plans that you come up with. Uh, but great idea, Kurt, and that's definitely uh, something we, we should add immediately to our to-do list. Uh, finally, or again, if you have more questions, keep, keep asking because we're here and, and that's what we do. But we also have a second poll for future webinar to uh, topics. And we'll launch the poll right now. And, and I listed nine of them. If you have specific requests, send them in as an email. We'll do what we can. Now, something might be so specific, it would be really hard to pull off. But we want to be sure that we're delivering content to help your Sea Scout ships grow, whether that's with advancement, whether that's with uh, just program activities of what to do when it's raining or snowing outside and you don't want to shut down for three months, you want to be able to have consistent weekly activities. Or you want to go, yeah, stand up paddle boards sound cool, but what do we do with them? So again, these are the, the ways that we're thinking of how can we help you? Uh, or, you know, like say that you're brand new and you want to get a boat. Okay, kayaks and stand up paddle boards are the way to start. Uh, there's something called a feasibility study. We have a presentation on how to do a feasibility study so you don't get a boat that that would consume your program. Because mm -hmm. the best way to think of a boat is uh, it's a 40-ton puppy that can eat you. And we don't want that to happen. We want you to be successful and have consistent weekly program so everyone can make friends, have the value of a scouting experience, have great summer cruises, and, and that's why we're here. On the flip side, we've seen great programs on galley, you know, and so there's material that the Coast Guard has that, that we could look at. So again, if you have a request of something that could that you need for help, uh, let us know. Now we, we will have a webinar in June, and so we're uh, we're looking at around June 12th, and we'll send out an email and invite, and that will be on planning back to school recruiting, and that has to start in June. 
In July, we will have one on how to incorporate scuba into your ship, and we'll talk about some information uh, on how to do that, starting with snorkeling and working out to open water, and, and that be your first month or two of activities. But there's a lot of other material out there, uh, from customs and courtesies to everything, uh, whether it's how to do a quartermaster service project. We want people to be successful, and we're going to keep doing webinars on a monthly basis to help. Uh, and another question just came in, and that is, can I give, <laughs> yes, you can. So uh, here's a proud DE. Can I give a shout out to the Texas Trails Council Sailing Academy at the last week of June? And he included a link, and yes, you can. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> Uh, happy to help with DE, and that's awesome. And it's great to have professionals. Uh, you know, tonight's attendees include everyone from professional staff to council level volunteers to skippers, mates, uh, and it's awesome to have uh, that level of participation. So I think, okay, I think we have answered all the questions. Uh, if anyone has anything else, don't don't be shy. Send an email. Uh, we'll, and as soon as I say that, another pops in. Uh, oh, uh, from uh, our council commodore in uh, Oregon Trail Council. They just started a new ship in Florence, Oregon. Congratulations. Glad to have more youth on the water in the great state of Oregon, uh, a state with something like 61,000 high school students. So get them all. And uh, it's good stuff. So with that, uh, Michael, any other words of wisdom for our attendees tonight? No, I think that pretty much covers it. I, you know, our, our research uh, across all of our programs continues to reinforce the fact that, you know, the reason people don't join programs is because they probably just not aware of them or they've never been asked. So um, I think a lot of this comes down to your market. How creative can you get? Sometimes it's as simple as, again, I have to quote, quote my good friend, Josh, have we put a poster up in Starbucks yet? Um, you know, is, is there a minor league ball team in your community that, would, that needs an organization to come out and do a flag ceremony? How cool would it be to have our youth out there in uniform doing a flag ceremony at the local, whatever the minor league? I mean, I think just people, us, those are our iconic uniforms and what we represent um, sends a very, very powerful message and will make people say, I need to get involved, right? So um, any way to heighten your visibility in the community would, would go a long way. Fourth of July, uh, oh, yeah. all, all, there are so many wonderful things uh, that you can engage your community. And, and again, that's, a, that's another topic, so we don't have to just you know, sound off from, off the top of our heads, but there's community engagement is another topic that we can hit because there are lots of ways to be active and there are lots of great ships. Uh, you know, the, the Curtis in Tacoma, Washington, like, I'll ask them for something like that because they are the masters at doing that. And there are lots of other people across the entire country uh, who could give wonderful case studies on how to be involved. So with that, thank you so much. Michael, thank you for joining us this evening. I know it's late in Texas, so. Uh, uh, scouting never sleeps. <laughs> it's just an hour a week per child in the country. That's right. That's right. <laughs> So with that, everyone, thank you so much for your time. Email away with any questions, and we will do uh, all that we can to, to help you all grow. And uh, thank you all for your time. So uh, everyone, have a wonderful evening. Thanks, Josh.